Q Season 3, Episode 7, Obsession. What is this, the final set? And four episodes left. Weird. I don't know, that was a weird, unsatisfying speech. No pressure, <laughs> not at all. There's zero pressure, everything's easy, fine. Nothing is at stake. That'll warm you up. <laughs> One of these things is not as satisfying as the other. Well, it's a very high Q thing. Getting over your fear by finding a greater fear. I'd be more afraid of Daichi's wrath. For that matter, rejection is pretty terrifying. And you get rejected and survived, so. It all comes down to this. How you feeling, Oikawa? <laughs> That's a great line. That's always so inspiring. Yes! Coming through. He made the promise. He delivered. Oh, what? For real? Oh, damn, that's so short. <laughs> I was about to say the faith, the confidence, but... I mean, yeah, it's terrifying. Oh, no. I hate you. Oh, they... Thought they got it up there, but now would be a great time for another amazing block moment. Still up there, still up there. Oh no, oh no. No, oh, okay, 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 okay. Nice read. Oh, this could get in his head too. Uh, for some reason, I feel like it's extra risky for Sugawara because he's he's. Nice. He's sensitive, and he's already questioning his role. Kakiyama, for whatever reason, seems less susceptible to insults. Trash talking. If anything, I feel like it makes him more competitive. Yeah. Are they proven now? Been a shadow of a doubt. This from the back set. Wow, and a team attack. That little extra bit of practice coming in for one point, and it might be the deciding factor. Oh damn, he's spiking. Oh, how's that for <laughs> your trash talking? Oh my god, that felt so critical. I feel attacked. <laughs> Sorry, Sugawara. That was a really bold move, but it feels like the, the right one. And very in keeping with the development of the show, not only because of the teamwork, but the concept of going for it, utilizing the skills you know give you the best chance despite the risk. If he was trepidatious and was trying to play it safe, it probably wouldn't have ended that way. And you can imagine him spiraling from there. There was no guarantee beforehand that it was going to end in a point, but it feels like the right choice just from a spiritual perspective and getting over the jitters, getting that taste of greatness, high level playing. Another hand stare. It's bold. What do you got to say now? No, no, no sympathetic flashback. Not now. Or is it deep reflection and development? Oh no. Oh no, it's sympathy. It's a sympathetic one. I feel attacked again. Oh no, why is this so tragic? And also dark? Okay, I was not expecting that. Just lean into that, that role, I guess. I don't know, they seem like a good match, actually. Junk Prodigy? Fix it? I know this was common practice back in the day, but it. Oh, my heart. Oh. Wow. あ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、まあ、ま
He developed like a whole value system around it. That was such a great conversation for so many reasons. One, Tendo and Ushiwaka seem like the perfect pairing. Because Ushiwaka is so stoic, stern. It's pretty easy to imagine people not wanting to step on his toes. To err on the side of caution with him and kind of leave him alone. But it's not that he's mean. He's actually like a pretty solid guy. He's just kind of old school, somewhat reserved. Reading into it, it seemed like he enjoyed that conversation. And it takes someone like Tendo, who's a, a little bit off the cuff and kind of a wild card, to blast through those social conventions somewhat. I think in many cases, people are craving these kinds of honest conversations. You know, it feels good to talk about your life in an open way if you feel there's no judgment, if you feel like it's not a, a competition or a game about trying to get a, you know, a gotcha moment or having this battle of roles, trying to position yourself over someone. Tendo in that conversation has the air not of trying to ridicule Ushiwaka, but actually kind of uh, respecting him and having genuine curiosity in his life and who he is. I mean, it can be pretty amazing what people will tell you if you can create the right environment between the two of you, even with total strangers, if they sense it's a safe space. The conversation is also great, obviously, for Ushiwaka, adding a lot of context to his passion. He says perhaps his father will watch him on TV, but you got to imagine and he's thought of it, right? That thought has occurred to him at some point. They established very quickly that his father is his hero, someone who was really looking out for him, who accepted him for who he was. And that same person outlined a hero scenario for him. So there you go. You have a really solid North Star at a very young age. It also seems like Ushiwaka having that kind of groundedness, looking so far into his, his goal and dreams that the, the pettiness that sometimes emerges in social interactions are kind of gone, would be one of the people who can appreciate Tendo the most and see past some of his eccentricities. <laughs> playing that point. I would feel bad, but they got enough championships. They can feel it. Only 15 points. This coach, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's that he doesn't like him. ]怖くない. Not exactly sure what to make of that interaction. But I do know that if Karasuno wins, Ushiwaka will be gracious towards Hinata, whatever his preconceptions of him. I could be wrong, but it's felt to me since the beginning that it wasn't dislike for Hinata. It was more like intrigue and a general sense that Hinata is naive, which I think is true. It just happens to be the case that that ends up being a, a virtue for Hinata because there's no obstacles to his drive for the ball and to do crazy things, given the fact that he's kind of hel helmed in by the greatness of his team. Whoa, we are just racking up points all over the place. They just, they came out so strong. Manasai. Ushiwaka's not going down without a fight. Yeah, yeah. He's still playing. There might be a parallel there as well with him and Hinata. Hinata's not your average player. He's definitely different. Yeah. Honestly, it's a relief. He's such a great character. You don't want him to fold. You want him to play his best. And then I want Carson to win. Daichi, once again. Oh, that was... You got him, you got him. Shinoi moving into place though. <laughs> this freeze frame, oh my God, that was amazing. Mishwaka's on fire. He's a true ace. Yeah, and I feel like, like I said before, I think this is what he wanted. Like, he wants him to play well. He's not rooting against Hinata or Kagama. Well, it's very direct. <laughs> very direct, like, pleasing my father. That's, that's scary. That's scary. It was indeed not out. Oh, I knew it was so good to be true. We gotta get him off this, this serving set. With his chest! I oh, don't know. That's going back to Ushiwaka, isn't it? They're just giving it to him. They're just believing in him. And he's earned it. Oh, so he got up there. Hell yeah. Oh. Got into his head. It comes up again and again in the show, but no matter how many times I say it, it still impresses me how they end up making each player so pivotal. Suki being one of my favorite examples of that just because of expectations, how much his character has grown since the beginning. I read that one. 
<laughs> nice callback. It's hard to keep doing it over and over again in the same play. But it's Ushiwaka. Oh, what? Nice. It's all good. But that's probably because of Suki, no? It's not lucky. He was expecting the resistance. Yeah, no, Suki's mind game is winning. What? It's frustrating. Refs, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's actually bleeding. It is gonna hurt a lot. It is gonna hurt a lot. And it's gonna hurt a lot emotionally for Suki, but it's the right call from a coach's perspective. From Suki's perspective, I would understand wanting to keep playing. Just to finish my thought earlier, I was gonna say that I think a common mistake in sports, and I've experienced this playing, is if you think you have a great play, but it doesn't amount to anything, and the game continues, or the volley or whatever it is continues, it's easy to not be on the ball as much because you've already gotten that feeling of satisfaction, or you think it's over, so you kind of like are in the momentum of going into rest mode. For Suki to be attacking the ball again and again like that, which is a really high level skill and also focus. Very another thing to say. Spiritual center of the team, do your thing. Someone set him straight, please. Not buying it. Not buying it. Yeah, yeah, obviously. なんてこと絶対ないから。月島があんな顔するようになってたなんてな。ここで根性を見せずに、いつ見せんだよ。ダメ。This <laughs> <laughs> No, you gotta do it. Exactly, exactly. That's like part of one of the big themes of the episode. And it's been long built. <laughs> Flashback. It's not very nice. I still feel it was the right call. You can be wrong and still be right. And inflict pain. Whoa, that episode was intense. There's so much going on. I think that was one of the best episodes of the season so far. It's just so much happening. Sugawara, Suki's growth, Daichi's strength, Tendo's sympathetic backstory that I, I didn't want, but now I'm grateful for. Same with Ushiwaka. Despite my just aching for Karsunu to win, it's hard not to respect and like Shiratora, Shiratorizawa as well. Honestly, I would say I feel more that way in this game or in this season than I do for Alba Josai. Not exactly sure why that is. This episode felt like three normal episodes combined into one in terms of the intensity and what it was able to accomplish. It ends on a down note overall for Carcino, but ultimately I feel like as a whole, it was super uplifting. Losing that point doesn't hurt as bad because they, they gave it their all. It wasn't Sugawara second guessing himself. He went for it. And just because it doesn't always go your way when you go for it, it just feels better to go for it, if that makes sense. To do what you know you can do, to not let your instincts or fear overcome your actions and to, you know, blast through them. There's a certain amount of randomness that's uncontrollable controllable in it, and so the outcome will not always be in your favor, but that decision on a personal level has meaning in itself. And then from a game perspective, there's two big things that really are one thing that give me hope, and that is the pair of Kageyama and Hinata coming back in and having major influence on the rest of the game. <laughs>